What's going on YouTube? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update today. Bitcoin, Ethereum, which is doing great, XRP, Litecoin, Link, and Digibyte. So those are six we're going to be going through. We're going to be looking on the one day time frame. So we actually step back, take a bigger picture view of this because Bitcoin's basically getting up to that area, guys, that key area of $10,500. If we're able to get over top of that, that truly could open some things up to over $13,000 for us. So we have to be very careful with this area because we are starting to get extended at this overhead resistance. So we're gonna have to see what we do with this. Are we gonna need a little bit more of a cooling down period, set a higher low so that we can go up through that or are we just gonna blast right through this and things are gonna get crazy and we're gonna be looking at a 95 on the daily RSI. It just is what it is guys, this is cryptocurrency right now. On the one day time frame, we're looking at about 75 for the RSI. So we are starting to get into overextended territory. Our stock up here, you can see we're pinned out basically, but we have not crossed to the downside yet. So right now, like we've talked about, this is the time you still want to be sitting in those positions. We want to see what we do with $10,562. We're up above our 30 EMA, we're up above our 60, we're up above our 100 moving average, which is in orange here, and we're up above our 200. And I like the fact that we had our 100 cross over top of our 200 as well. That's a great sign for us, staying up above all those moving averages. The only thing for me is this candle today is going to be extremely important because what's it going to do at this overhead resistance area? Are we going to have a super like long leg doji? Are we going to have a shooting star candle, more bearish candlestick? pattern at that overhead resistance or are we just going to cut right through it so i'm really paying attention to that today overall what i'd like to see us hold as support is nine thousand dollars i still have my alarm in at that area and we also want to see continued swelling of the volume big sticks are what we're going to need to get up over top of ten thousand five hundred dollars that's going to be so critical for us if we take a look here you can see we have a strong buy for the technicals the only thing like i said just be careful we're in some of those overextended territories while we're coming up to the main overhead resistance area that we have not been able to break through Guys, the first time we really came up and tested was October 25th, 2019. Ever since then, we have not been able to break over top of that. So these next few days, this is going to be everything for Bitcoin. If we see a huge rejection up there, it could be a massive dump. Just be aware of that as well. So really use those stop losses, place them at key areas, trail this price action and see what happens. That's the best thing that I can tell you guys. But it'd be great to finally break through that $10,500. It's been plaguing us for so long. And I just truly want to see us get into that macro bull market, which that most likely would start us because we'd break out of that macro downtrend from $20,000 with those lower highs that we've been continuously having. So that's Bitcoin, guys. You get some from this, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends. Trying for 200 likes on this video. Appreciate you all being here with me today. We're going to move into Ethereum next. ETH has just been killing it, guys. Look at this. And this is how Ethereum moves. This is how this space moves. And that's why you have to be so prepared. When I talk about the candles getting tight, there's going to be a massive break, guys. And this is what happens. Okay? So now we're coming up to the key area. Same deal here. Overhead resistance area. We'll move this up just a hair there. We're going to be looking at about $332 as overhead resistance. We're catching it right now. I would not be surprised at this area because we are so overextended here. We're up around 86 on the RSI. Our stock's pegged out. I wouldn't be shocked if we came back down, cooled down. We'd want to hold $282 and then make that next move to try to get up through $332. But this is crypto, guys. If we want to end up running to, you know, $417 would be the next area. And it's just going to be this straight line and indicators don't even matter. It can happen. But this is the spot. If you're in an Ethereum position, you want to continue to let this ride right now. You want to let those big swelling moves come in. That's what's so important. This is an impulse wave right there, guys. Heavier volume. That's a lot. And it was the direction out of this consolidation, a nice move to the upside. So I wouldn't chase this. So if you don't have any Ethereum and you want to get in, I would wait to see if we do get some type of cooling down period before we potentially could get that next strong move to the upside just because of how overextended we're getting. Typically, when we get up to about 88, 90, that's when you're going to start seeing the sell off right over here. There's a sell off back in this area, sell off, sell off, sell off. So we do have to be aware of these things. And this has been one heck of a move. In my opinion, I think it needs to cool down, breathe a little bit so we can make that next shot up to $417 for Ethereum. We're up above our 30, our 60, 100, and 200. Things looking great there. So that's going to be Ethereum, $326. If you like me covering that, y'all, let me know down low. We're going to move next into XRP. This has been a position I've been playing since about. I think it was 19 cents 0.19588 was where I got in right around that area I've just been trying to let this ride as well 
We have broken up over top of that 200 moving average, so that's a good thing for us. We're coming up to the next overhead resistance area, and that's going to be at 0 0.22315 for XRP. The only thing I would pay attention to, this is like a very long leg, almost gravestone doji there. came on a little bit heavier volume, so there was some selling pressure in that area. But for me, I've just been wanting to let my position ride because my position was basically, let me pull this down here and I'll show you right about in this range here. So this green line, this is where my position is. And I'm just slowly, as this price moves up, I'll just slowly creep that stop loss behind it and just keep working it so I can lock in those profits or at least a break even trade. Because once you start getting this move, you wanna at least move it to break even then. And then as it starts going higher, just slowly creep that up so you can lock in the profits. That's the way that I've done it. I'm paying attention to this purple trend line as well and to see if we can stay up above this 200. We're up above our 30, our 60, our 100, and now up above the 200, which we have not been trading up above since roughly February 26, 2020. It's been a long time, guys. So if we're able to get over top of 0 0.22315, I'm going to look up to 0 0.23585 is going to be the area of overhead resistance. In terms of support, I want to see us hold this 200 moving average, not dropping back below it ever again. That's what I would like to see, guys. And that's going to be at 0 0.20942 is what we're going to be looking at for that 200 moving average there. And if we take a look at trading view, we have a two cell, eight neutral, 18 buy, two cell, seven neutral, two buy. Moving average is looking great there. So XRP is starting to get that move. We have to be aware that our RSI is starting to get up to that 70 here at some key overhead resistances. So if we do need to cool down, it can happen. But it's nice to see that we do have that swelling of the volume starting to pick up the pace there for XRP. And nice to be nice to see some big movements here. When XRP moves, it moves very fast, very aggressively. A lot of times the candles are 15 to 20% both to the upside and the downside, and we need to be aware of that. Okay, guys, so that is XRP. If you want me to keep covering that, let me know down low. We're going to move into Litecoin next. Another one I really like is Dash. Been paying a lot of attention to that, and also Zcash as well. I've been in a Zcash position since about $57. It's up to $60. Nine dollars right now. I've been making a really strong move. That's getting up to resistance as well. But Zcash is one. I was just reading an article on Zcash and Dash, and they were talking about how those are the coins that potentially could make it back to you know five hundred dollars, even back up to that thousand dollar range when they really start pumping. And due to the privacy factors of them, I know there's been some issues and some breaches, things like that. But it's something that I like to look at. I like privacy coins as well. So we're going to move into Litecoin next. <clears throat> Litecoin is at $49.28. Key thing for Litecoin here, we got to break through this 200-day moving average. That's going to be the absolute key for us. You can see we're starting to get a, a green little cross here of our 30 over top of our 60. That's a good deal. We're up above our 100, but we got to get over this 200. That's where Litecoin's been lagging behind. It's not up above that 200 moving average yet. If we can get up above that, then I would look up most likely to like $63 in terms of overhead resistance. We really could run hard and fast. We have been putting in higher lows, trying to change this trend on the micro sense, in the very micro sense, just even in that four hour time frame, getting those higher lows coming in going to be so important in terms of support let's stay up above now we'd say $44 and 51 cents is going to be the key for us um, just like we talked about RSI it's at 66 right now so there still could be plenty of room to run because it's not as overextended as some of the other ones if Litecoin can get this pop to the upside guys it could be something special but we have to pay attention we just have to wait to see what Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to do if they're finally going to start calming down a little bit retrace a little bit so they potentially can pump again if we go into Litecoin here for the technicals pull this up we have a three cell a nine neutral and a 16 buy is what we're looking at there oscillators one cell eight neutral two buy moving averages two cell one neutral and a 14 buy there for litecoin same deal if you're in a litecoin position this is where i would just hold it right now and just make sure we don't start dropping down below the key areas of like that 40 dollars or whatnot if you're holding this long term Okay, so that's going to be Litecoin. The next one we're going to get into is Link. Link has been retracing like we've been talking about. This is what I like to see. It needs more time just to cool down, in my opinion, which we are cooling down a little bit more now. It's nice to see that. But still, from the move down in here, from our low up to our high, we've only retraced to that 0.236, which is not that much retracement. Things which are extremely bullish, that's about where they will retrace to, or that 0.382, then they'll move again. So anywhere between this 7.22 and this $6.33, 
may be the area that we do put in that bottom here so we can start moving again. I'm looking at these areas. I'm even looking back down to the 0 0.618 or that 0 0.5 at about $5.70 and $5.12 is where I would want to be slowly accumulating them if I were to jump back in this position. Nice thing though, we're still up above our 30, our 60, our 100, and our 200. You can see they're starting to fan out a little bit here. So we just need to go back and test some of these areas, in my opinion. Still a little bit more time to cool off. You know, if it does pump, it does pump, guys. That's just the name of the game. You get in, you get out, take your profits, and then you move on to the next one. That's at least how I do it. But it's been a good coin to trade. I really like the movement in it. But you can see here we did set a lower high. So here's our high, lower high. And now we're going to see if we set a lower low here or if this can be area we hold as support. In terms of link now, let's check this out. You can see we still have the buy category because of those moving averages and everything. But you can see how it's slowly creeping in here. We have eight sell, 10 neutral, 10 buy. Oscillator's about dead neutral, one sell, nine neutral, one buy is what we're looking at there okay so just in terms of link i would be patient you know if you're holding it long term continue to hold it we're up above these moving averages see what happens i just really like to swing trade things that's my that's my game here okay so that's the link you want me to keep covering that let me know down low and then we'll move into digibyte will be our last one here let me know if you're here for digibyte i want to see if we still got the digibyte people here really trying to check this out I want to find you a good chart here. It's hard to find one with a lot of information here for Digibyte is what I've found. And if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. I know people hate when I do it off the tether, so I won't do that even though there's a little bit more information. I might just have to go back to Bitrix here, guys. All right, so we've been looking at the symmetrical triangle here, and I actually want to draw this out for us again. So we'll draw this. This is going to be a really rough one. So what we're doing here, we had a 5% failure. We broke out. It came on heavier volume too. So this was a little bit of a fake here, guys. And now we're back testing that area we broke out from. So in my opinion, we need to hold roughly about 0 0.02305 is going to be the area of support we need to hold in terms of overhead resistance. We're going to have to get over 0 0.02667. You can see we have had a downward stock cross here. We're at 78 and 87. So we do need to be aware of that. RSI, though, is not that overblown. We're at 59 right now. So this scenario, if we just back test this, we still could get a nice little pop to the upside. We have to be aware of that. Okay, so we're up above our 30. We're up above our 60, our 100, our 200. Looking good on the moving averages there. Technical analysis, 3 sell, 8 neutral, 17 buy. Oscillators, 1 sell, 7 neutral, 3 buy is what we're looking at there. So just want to bring this to you guys. You get some from this. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's see what happens as we approach these overhead resistances, guys. Take care. Love you all.